We've all heard of the enigmatic character Doctor Who, the itinerant Time Lord with 13 faces, who travels from place to place and time to time. And of course, he always saves the Earth. As much as many of us would like to travel through time and space, Doctor Who is a fictional character and we're firmly rooted here in the 21st century. But what happens when we start to mix fiction and fact? St. Valentine's Day is traditionally the day when lovers express their love for one another in whatever way they'd like to. The cynical amongst you will say that it's just another racket by greeting cards companies, florists and confectioners. The feast day of St. Valentine has been part of the tradition of the church in many parts of the world for centuries. But just who was St. Valentine? And that's where the problem starts. On February the 14th, not just one St. Valentine, but two are officially celebrated. One of a Roman church leader and another of Valentinus of Turney, both of whom were martyred for their faith and both are buried next to the Via Flaminia in Rome. Actually, there were no shortage of Christian martyrs named Valentinus or Valentine. There were at least 11 others, including a woman called Valentina. It seemed that by the Middle Ages, it was usual to just remember the whole lot on February the 14th, which is the feast day of St. Valentine. So there have been at least as many St. Valentines as there have been actors who played Doctor Who. So who's who, you may say? Even worse, none of these noble people who were martyred for their faith were ever associated with the idea of love and romance, even though they were stuff of many legends and stories. So where did that come from? Nobody's really sure, but a good contender for the title comes in the form of a bloke called Jeff. Well, actually, his name was Geoffrey Chaucer, the great English 14th century author and poet who wrote of St. Valentine and made the connection with love and romance. There doesn't seem to have been anything earlier than that. After Chaucer, Valentine's Day became a day when love was celebrated, where people expressed their love for one another in verse and by giving gifts. By the beginning of the 19th century, the sending of Valentine cards was in full swing. Commercialization had set in and the rest is history. Every year there's the usual run on cards, chocolates, flowers, jewellery and restaurants having the opportunity to charge higher prices, all in the name of romance. So on February the 14th we have a celebratory day named after a person or persons named Val and the details have largely been made up by a guy called Jeff. Actually there's nothing wrong in encouraging people to express their love because anybody in a loving relationship is going to be doing that quite often, certainly more than one day a year. And there's nothing wrong with a bit of romance either. Sadly, what was most squeezed out by the Chaucerization of Valentine's Day is the significance of all those Valentines who were celebrated on February the 14th. They were all people who had been persecuted and killed just because they were Christians. They usually had horrible deaths. The greatest expressions of love aren't through large boxes of chocolates or huge bunches of flowers or expensive jewellery or grand gestures. They're by standing with and being there for the ones you love, whatever it costs, even if it's your own life. Jesus once said this, greater love is no one than this, that someone laid down his life for his friends. The ultimate expression of God's love for the human race was the death of Jesus on the cross. Here's another bit from the Bible. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Jesus didn't just say noble things about those who laid down their lives for others. He actually laid his own life down. And why? so that you and I might know God, might find meaning to life, and might have a hope that stretches beyond life.